Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We're trying to make sense of this crazy Arizona market and how slow is it out there? Well, that's what you're supposed to say. How slow is it? It's so slow. I saw a real estate agent sitting in Starbucks by himself. That's slow, my friends. It's slow, but there's enough activity out there given the low number of listings that we have to keep those that are out there working pretty busy. And it People wanting to sell their house are finding it easier than they anticipated. Not just here in Arizona, but across the country, especially in Massachusetts for some reason. It's nuts out there. And uh, the tired old story of there's not enough homes for sale is uh, repeating itself quite a bit. I could show you right here when we take a look at our active listings here in the Phoenix market. And you can see here we're down to 10,200. We went up slightly, but I blame that on the lack of sales that we had over the 4th of July weekend, which I show you here on my seven-day moving average. You can see that every holiday we do this, we go down. But the 4th of July was on a Tuesday this week, so it put in a little bit bigger of a dent because kind of gave everybody a four-day weekend. But as today is Tuesday, you can see that we're coming back up. And by Wednesday, I expect the number of contracts to climb Yet again, just one of those things where it doesn't really tell you anything. The numbers don't count per se when you start looking at holidays. When you look at the demand index that we have, you can see slightly down here. I'll see if I can pull up my magnifying glass that it is. That's not the best thing to use. Let me just circle that puppy. There it is. You can see it's kind of flatlining a little bit. And it's actually it's gone down. So, but that's summer for you. But not so much summer, but. Let's not kid ourselves. These uh, recent interest rates are really putting people on the sidelines. In fact, uh, Pat pointed out to me on our Friday show that somebody coined the term as buyers are in safari mode. They're in the distance looking at the real estate market with binoculars. They want to buy. They want to come in. We have an affordability problem, a major affordability problem, only made worse by the high interest rates. Now, when we talk about new builds, it's pretty obvious they're propping up their market by offering rate buy-downs. How long will that money supply last on the builder side is what everybody's watching. You know, it does cost a lot of money to put money aside to buy down interest rates. So essentially, the homes that they're selling, the value of those homes really aren't where they are with their asking price because the rate buy-down is built into that. For example... They're selling you the home for five hundred fifty thousand, and you're using twenty thousand of that to buy down your rate. Well, maybe the real value of that home is five hundred and thirty thousand, but they're doing well because people can get better financing. The only thing to really glean from that right now in this market is it's obvious that interest rates are what is going to move housing and keep it from being so slow. But look at this. Look at listings under contract. I mean, it has really gone down this summer. And again, you can tie this right to the interest rate spike that we had here right in June and uh, right towards the last part of June. And it has affected sales on a weekly basis. That's pretty rough, pretty slow out there. What else is going on? Well, look at the demand versus supply. Now, you'll remember in here, and I've showed you this chart ad nauseum, that when supply is way down here and demand's up here, this is when we had the silly season of 2021. Everybody's waiving inspections, overbidding, um, waiving appraisals, <laughs> you name it. Exactly the opposite of what happened here when supply was way up here and demand was down here. Now, our demand, and this is an index, okay, so our demand index is sitting kind of flatlined here and it's not anywhere near what we saw at the bottom of 2007, 2008, but you know what? It's getting close. And uh, the only, and here's the interesting thing though, price changes are still price cuts still going down. People are not having to cut the price of their homes, which gets back to what I said originally. If you're selling, it's not bad out there because there aren't very many of you. <laughs> so when people want to go out and find a house, they're just giddy that yours is for sale. And uh, because of that, you know, we do have some bidding wars going on out there. Uh, where are people getting the cash? You know, uh, there are some people in other parts of the country or even in town that have had a lot of equity and they've sold their home and 
they're able to put a large amount of money down. So there are people that are able to compete in a high interest rate environment right now. And it's just enough to go ahead and make homes that are listed sell. It's just enough to make it feel really busy when you list your house. And you list your house, you've had three offers. You probably had 30 people come by at the open house. And you're like, I thought it was slow. Well, you're probably the only open house within one mile of your place because you're the only one on the market. That's what it feels like. And that's what's going on. Now, we've got the big interest rate um, possible hike coming up towards the end of the month by the Fed after they look at the recent inflation data. And so that's what everybody's looking for. You know, uh, Barry Habib seems to feel that the inflation numbers are going to be good enough to where uh, they won't be able to raise rates, that they uh, will look like fools if they raise rates, if, in, if uh, inflation is down. That may not be the case. Uh, it sounds like they're dug in and going to stick in here in the long haul. Now, the bond markets have priced in a 25-point basis hike in July at a percentage rate of 93%. So they're like, okay, it's coming. We didn't think they'd do it. We thought for sure that they would stay flat and hang out here for a while and wait for more data. But the way they're talking doesn't look like it. So in their survey that they have, they're sitting at about 93%. Now in September, in their survey, they're down to 37%. So they may just be repeating the old uh, survey cycle again, 37% now. The closer we get to September, they're going to go, whoops, yeah, looks like we're wrong again. That's a very complicated business trying to guess where interest rates are going to be. The Fed doesn't raise and lower the overnight rate just because of housing. So those of us in the industry, we look at it and go, oh, they're killing housing. Well, they might be, uh, but they might also be protecting other things or breaking other things. It's really complicated. If they raise rates much higher, what's going to happen to small regional banks again? Um, if they don't raise rates, what's going to happen to the dollar? Because every other country in the world is raising rates through the roof. So it's kind of hard, hard for us to sit back and not raise rates and expect our dollar to be sound. And that's what their job is. Keep the economy going, keep inflation down and keep the dollar sound. So you and I are not going to figure that out. All we can do is just sit back and watch. Personally, where I see the market right now is not very harmful for us because it's slow. Um, I don't see as many bad decisions being made now as we saw in 2021 by, by buyers. They kind of had a hell be damned, I want that house attitude. Don't blame them. Um, they got in, some people got in, got pretty decent prices. But the losses that we had from 2022 are almost erased here in Phoenix. I think we're in within about 3% of that peak that we saw. So we rallied, turned around, went back up. Going to share some numbers on a Thursday night show, but one of the numbers I'm going to share with you is that actually resale sales are only down 13 percent that surprises a lot of a lot of people but wait until you see just how bad the institutional investors are and the i buyers are they're not doing anything especially when you look compared to the last two years now moving forward as we get into the summer here i don't expect fall to be much better i expect it to be slow i'd like to see it I'd like to see some more inventory start to show up. I don't personally feel it's going to be the Airbnbs, despite some of the YouTubers that are out there saying there's a crash coming. couple reasons. One, they're not all going to sell at once. Two, the biggest factor is there's a big conflict between the numbers that were shared, that their revenue is down 40%, and reality. Their numbers, their revenue is not down 40%. In fact, not only does AirDNA dispute that number, they say we're down 3.8%, but Airbnb disputes that number saying 3% looks more accurate. They don't know where that other outfit got minus 40%. But again, it makes headlines. It gets mouse clicks. It gets you on MSNBC. It gets you on Fox Business News. doesn't make it true. So you got to be careful. So in order for this flood of Airbnbs come and hit the market and affect housing, there would have to be a massive flood of Airbnbs, but we only have 18,000. And of those 18,000, a lot of them are condos. A lot of them are single family. But if you say 75% of them hit the market all at once, unlikely, we still won't have enough inventory. 
normal inventory here is 27,000 units. We have 10,000 now. If all 18,000 came up, we'd be normal, 28,000. That doesn't precipitate a crash, folks. When you actually look at the numbers, take back, take a breath, look at what could possibly happen. That's not a scenario that I can buy into. Now, will I see more Airbnbs hit the market? Very likely because we've oversaturated the market and we're starting to see increased regulation. Those two combinations are just going to make some players say, I'm out. It was a nice run. I'm going to sell it. But those are nice products. Those homes are kept up very well. As soon as they hit the market, they're gone. It'd be nice to kind of muddle along here with about an 8% interest rate for a while. Let some of these Airbnbs start to show up and hit the market and give us some inventory improvement gradually and uh, see what happens from there. I don't like shocks in the system. I like slow movement. We could be in this situation for years, but we're conditioned. We want things to change within 60 to 90 days. I don't see that happening. I think we're just going to have to sit back and watch things for a while. If you're a buyer, uh, that's unfortunate, especially if you're a first time home buyer. Do you really want to wait 10 years to try and get into the home? It's also a possibility. How likely is it? I don't know. I've never been good at projecting long term and either have the big guys like Zillow, CoreLogic, Redfin, etc. So you can always run it as a scenario. So it's really good for you right now to know what number you're trying to hit, what home price you're trying to hit, what your payment tolerance is and plan accordingly. But most importantly, keep watching here because I'll keep you up to speed on the numbers. Take care.